Cafeteria plans were added to the Internal Revenue Code in November 1978 as Internal Revenue Code Section 125. Section 125 of the code allows employees to pay for health insurance and other group benefits with pre-tax salary deductions. But it isn't just employees who benefit. Employers are subject to less taxes as well. So really, it's a it's a win-win. A cafeteria plan is a separate written plan maintained by an employer for employees that meets the specific requirements of Section 125 of the Internal Revenue Code. It provides participants an opportunity to receive certain benefits on a pre-tax basis. The employee can select from two or more offerings and tailor it to their specific needs. Several classes of medical benefits qualify as Section 125 cafeteria plans. The most common of the cafeteria plans involves medical insurance for employees. And participation in the cafeteria plans potentially saves employees upward of 7.65% for FICA taxes and may, may save more money depending on the employee's income tax bracket. Premium only or perhaps is a cafeteria plan type that allows employees to deduct premiums for the benefit on a pre-tax basis, reduces both the employees and the employer's FICA tax, and may include medical, dental, vision, and other plans. Flexible spending arrangements, or FSAs, is another type of cafeteria plan benefits that assists in the payment of medical expenses, childcare expenses, and prescription costs, and transportation. IRS Publication 502 provides more examples. Employee contributions are limited to 2,850 in 2022, 3,050 in 2023, and 3,200 in 2024. Contributions above these amounts are treated as taxable income. Typically, FSAs have a use it or lose it provision, which means you must use the funds that were set aside as part of your payroll deductions by year end. The IRS permits up to $500 rollover annually per employee at the employer's discretion. And that limit is $610 for 2023 and $640 for 2024. So how does an FSA work? Before the year begins or when you start a new job, HR will ask you if you want to contribute to an FSA, and if so, how much? You decide on the amount, but it can't be more than the annual limit. Then as part of each paycheck, you have a proportionate amount withheld. And when you incur expenses that are reimbursable under the FSA, you submit a receipt to the FSA, which are, they often have a mobile phone app to make it convenient, and you get the money back. And because the dollars were deducted pre-tax from your paycheck, you save tax money. However, you have to consider are the tax savings worth the extra effort of having to monitor your spending and submit expense receipts to the cafeteria plan? Will you potentially forfeit some of the money that was withheld from your paycheck because your, your circumstances changed? Also, you may lose the FSA money unexpectedly. For instance, some FSAs have provisions that when your job has layoffs, you can only submit qualifying expenses to the date of your layoff. An FSA is a good fringe benefit, but you also have to read the fine print. We've been talking a lot about pre-tax deductions. Let's take a closer look at what that exactly means. Uh, here we have one calculation where the deduction is post-tax without a cafeteria plan, and the second calculation is where the deduction is withheld pre-tax with a cafeteria plan. The gross wages are the same, but the net pay is different. Both payroll calculations begin with gross wages of $2,500. Deductions that are allowed to be pre-tax deducted um, reduce both income taxes and FICA. In this case, the cafeteria plan and the pre-tax deduction resulted in a tax saving of $86 per paycheck 
and annual savings, assuming a biweekly payroll of $2,236. As with all things taxes, there are some exceptions. Some pre-tax deductions, such as the employee's portion of health insurance, is a pre-tax deduction for federal, state, and FICA taxes. Other pre-tax deductions, such as the 401k deduction, is only a pre-tax deduction for federal and state taxes, but not FICA taxes. Health savings accounts are another type of offering in cafeteria plans. HSAs may only be offered by an employer if the health plan they offer their employees has a high deductible as defined by the IRS. The minimum health plan deductibles in 2023 are $1,500 for employee only and $3,000 for the family, and in 2024, $1,600 for employee only and $3,200 for the family to qualify for the HSA. The health savings account functions like a bank account in that the employee owns the funds contributed, although employers may also contribute to the funds. Unused funds roll over each year and continue to grow with the account, and unused funds do not affect the yearly contribution limits. So let's look at the contribution limits. For 2023, there, they are at 3,850 for a single individual and 7,750 for a married couple. And in addition, employees age 55 and older may contribute an additional $1,000 per year as a catch-up contribution. Employer contributions to HSAs are tax-exempt as far as federal income tax, FICA, and FUTA because sums contributed are considered employee wages. The contribution limits have increased in 2024 by $300 for single individuals and $550 for married taxpayers. The catch-up contribution for taxpayers age 55 and older remains unchanged. HSAs differ from FSAs because the funds may be set aside for use later in life. Employees who are not covered, offered an HSA by their employer, may even set one up with a trustee. HSAs are considered to have a triple tax benefit. Contributions up to the annual limit are tax deductible. Any investment income is tax-free, and withdrawals are tax-free if they're are used for qualifying medical expenses.